Hi, welcome to the vlog guys. So um, I just thought I'd run through uh, 10 top tips for any newbie uh, night fishing carper if you like. Um, so just kind of point out these are my opinion, not necessarily what everyone else would agree with. Um, I wouldn't say they're necessarily for your um, seasoned night night fishing uh, night fishing carper of course. Now don't be wrong, everyone can learn something new but uh, I'd say you know if you're looking to get into fishing or you've just um, started a couple of night fishing sessions and you feel you're not quite enjoying it maybe as much as you should um, then hopefully these kind of 10 tips will, will help you get there um, is equipment so um, now obviously again if you are relatively new to this then uh, I'm sure you may be just starting out or maybe you're just looking to upgrade some, some equipment um, now I just kind of split this into three sections so uh, basically equipment can be bivy, um, bed chair and sleeping bag or sleeping arrangement shall we say um, so I guess really in terms of the first one to kind of cover off actually should be bed chair. Now um, these bed chairs they can range anywhere from 50 quid to two, three hundred pounds, um, maybe even more. Uh, again, half the time you're paying for branding just to point out. But what I would probably suggest for anybody is, as always, stay within your budget. But maybe go to a go outdoors. Um, you know they do have. Last time I was there, I think about seven or eight. Uh, different bed chairs that you could actually use um, so definitely go and have a look at them um, see which one works for you shop around uh, go outdoors I think do a, a price guarantee I think they'll if you find it cheaper online they'll uh, they'll beat it by 10% so something to, to definitely think about um, in that sense um, but again just make sure it's something that's within budget I know it's really important not to go kind of two end to the other way basically so you don't really want something that's 30 40 quid um, you know I'm sure you can get them but um, you need to be comfortable there's nothing worse than being uncomfortable when you're fishing so uh, make sure it's something uh, that's going to last you but also is something that's really comfortable uh, in terms of bivy so um, again this is something that is it, it's very much personal opinion um, I mean I'm sitting here now at Cromwell Lakes and I can probably guarantee there's not one person on this lake that's got the same bivy as somebody else uh, me personally, I'll just kind of give you a bit of a quick snapshot there. So I'm in the Airflow uh, Bivy Two Man Mark II. Um, this uh, costs about about three hundred pounds uh, for mine. Um, really, really impressed with it. It goes up within ten minutes. Uh, it comes down within ten minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, it's it's a really reliable uh, two man. Um, I use it obviously just for me. I don't really have anyone else joining me because I love lots of space. Um, but again, two man, you can definitely get ton, tons of people um, in. Sorry, tons of equipment rather um, in uh, in any two man really. I mean, in terms of what I would su suggest you do, um, now that it's really important. Again, kind of ties it all ties in really. But make sure again it's something that's going to keep you warm. Uh, the cheaper down the scale you go. Uh, the cheaper you're going to get. It's as black and white as that with bivvies. You know, you're not going to get 100 quid and land on lucky. You know, you, you're going to pay and get what you actually pay for. So, um, worth shopping around. Um, look online. Look for discount codes. Um, don't necessarily go for the the ones that everybody else says you should go for. One is something that I'm going to tell you, which I don't even use myself actually here. So, um, and it's not because it's not good. So, sleeping bag. I don't like sleeping bags, um, full stop. It doesn't make a difference how big it is or whatever it is. I don't like that really tight, confined feeling that I get. I appreciate some people love it, uh, and there's some fantastic um, you know, sleeping bags out there. So you know, definitely go and, and have a look, um, shop around. You can get a four or five season one, which is probably the best way to go, um, and they're about 40 odd quid. So uh, again, shop around, look at Amazon, eBay, go outdoors you know you can get some pretty decent ones for for little equipment and I'd say you know the the three main fundamental ones for me there um, are probably going to set you back three to five hundred pounds depends how depends how, how far you want to go with it okay and tip number two um, nice and simple is spare clothes so you never know what the elements are going to be uh, you know it could be raining one minute sunny the next um, and also you don't know when actually accidents are going to happen um, and what I mean by accidents is actually falling in the water um, falling over in a pile of mud um, again you don't really want to be having 24 48 hour sessions where within 10 minutes you turn up to the bank you could literally screw your entire clothes up so um, it's important you probably get some decent cl you know, clothing which I will come back to later but um, sp take some spare clothes you know top trousers um, underwear socks etc so take it all with you if you don't use it 
what, what harm's been done. Just chuck it back in the cupboard when you get home. Um, as I say, there's nothing more to say about, about this one. This is really simple. Just take it with you. You don't use it. It doesn't matter. Okay, and tip number three is um, pre-tied rigs. Oh, again, this can be quite a wide one, so I'll try and keep it quite brief. But um, a lot of people make their own rigs, especially uh, you know seasoned carp, vet carp veterans. You know they're used to making their own rigs from scratch. Um, and you know, for me, I think it's a, a really good skill. Uh, it's something that takes a lot of time to get used to. But if you're somebody that doesn't like the kind of constant tying up of new rigs all the time, um, there are some really good um, pre-made rigs out there actually. Um, and you know, again, a seasoned carper may think oh, pre-tied rigs. There are some good ones. There are some crap ones as well. Um, so uh, have a look around. Um, I will put a, uh, a kind of a, a link um, just below for you, so you can have a quick look um, at the ones that I personally have used in the past. Um, and again, they're just simple, nice to tie up. They've caught a lot of, you know, a couple of my um, PBs. They've caught me a lot of fish over the years. Um, so uh, either way, whether you use pre-made. Uh, or you know, tie them all yourself at home, um, you know, again, whichever works for you. But what I would definitely say is, if you are doing that, pre-tie them, pre-make them before you go. Get them ready. If you're using PVA bags, get them ready in the bags, you know, so you can literally just attach them on with a quick link. Um, it's probably the best thing. Okay, and tip number four, so um, is lighting. Now this comes in, in many fashions. Obviously the traditional one you're gonna need for night fishing, no matter what, is a uh, head torch. So um, these head torches can be brought from anywhere between kind of £10 to actually over £100, believe it or not. Uh, now, most of them do the same thing. You know, you want um, a few different settings. You want the, probably the red light. Uh, you want the standard kind of, you know, just normal beam. Uh, and then you, know, you can get some which have got SOS signals and various different gadgets. But um, what I would definitely say on the head torch front, they can go anywhere from a tenner, as I said earlier, to 100 quid. Do not spend £100 on a head torch. Again, personal opinion here, and I probably shouldn't kind of push mine on anyone, but um, I don't understand what you want a head, a head torch to do. If it has them functions, it's got the red, you know, the red light, it's got the normal beam. Why do you want to spend 100 quid on a torch? I've had ones from um, Amazon. About, uh, I think back in the day, I think I got those, but the one I used from Amazon um, was like 10 quid, um, and it does everything that I want it to do. Absolutely everything. So, um, other than that, I would definitely say an, another one uh, to think about is your internal baby lighting. Now, if you haven't got a bite alarm system that has one included, then um, there's some great ones called Hero Beam. Um, Hero Beam, they're a pack of two. They cut, they're about twenty quid, um, so they're not not expensive at all. Um, they do take about three or four batteries, double um, A batteries, but um, you know they will they will very much keep you. Um, sorted over the night um, I've had some for a long long time now I wouldn't swap them um, again they're really reliable they have a hook on the bottom so you can hang them from the top of your bivy if it's got an option for that um, you know you literally just slide them up and the light comes on slide them down it goes off the batteries last forever so if you're doing lighting those are good options for you okay and uh, tip number five so research um, a big one that so many people let themselves down on so when I say research, now if you're going to a lake, for example, we had this uh, social book with hydrobates um, some months ago now, November time. Uh, what I would definitely say is, you know, whatever lake you're going to go to, have a look on YouTube. There's always a video on YouTube about most lakes. Uh, you know, speak to the bailiff, give them a call, see what the, the lake is like. Is it weedy? Is it silty? Is it gravel pits all over the place? Um, again, what, what colour baits work? And a whole lot. So don't be afraid to put in some work. Now, yeah, you can turn up to a lake and wing it. Um, you can, I mean, especially a highly stocked lake, um, but really you don't want to be kind of putting yourself in that situation. So um, I'd definitely say, you know, do some do some research, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, even there's some uh, carp forums as well. I think it's carpforum.co.uk. I could be wrong on that one. Um, but if you have a look on there as well, everyone's always willing to help and, and obviously give, give advice. So um, do some research, know your stuff. Uh, and you're going to have so much uh, more productive time, shall we say. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's definitely a good one from my perspective. Do your research. And tip number six is uh, basically just knowing your swim. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, there's, there's a lot of tools out there these days. There's a lot of fish finders. Um, you know, my kind of choice, if you like, is the Deeper Pro. Um, the Pro Plus rather, um, so that's really really good, I mean forget the fish finding option on there uh, it's more about the contours of the lake that I'm really kind of looking for 
uh, and for example this session that I'm on at Cromwell right now uh, it basically allowed me to very very quickly figure out exactly what I was fishing over next to an overhanging tree so um, you know I, straight away I knew exactly what it was um, and I knew exactly what to expect really from uh, kind of going forward in terms of my approach so I think it's really really important um, that you know you you do pay attention to stuff like that um, I mean if you can't really afford the, the deeper pro plus then I mean what I would probably say is uh, gripper leads um, are probably just as good as anything else uh, you know again I'm sure you've probably seen them but if you haven't uh, then it's literally just something you can, you can attach onto your line um, and it's got it's about normally about four or five prongs and in a circular motion and that'll drag around the, the bottom and you can kind of tell what you're fishing over then um, from the feel of the actual uh, obviously the lead coming back through the line so um, something to you know to, to definitely obviously you know, think about um, everyone's ready uh, in terms of their own type of tactics but I mean one thing I would probably say as well kind of going on from that so you've found your spot you're fishing um, you know night's kind of on its way which it actually is now um, it's really important that you find something as a distant marker whether that be a tree overhanging bush etc something that you can you can see um, during the night so you know, the silhouette on the water so it's very much uh, important that you find something um, within that area that you're fishing so at night you can cast onto that spot every single time Okay, and number seven um, is uh, something that is really, really uh, important to everyone with OCD. Um, but uh, yeah, me, me in particular on um, on this side is about the actual setup. So, and what I mean by setup is outside of your actual bivy, um, what do you have? Where do you have it, etc. So, if I just pan around this uh, this camera here, you'll see that I have a bivy, nothing in front of me. I have the two rods. And then, other than that, I've got the, uh, the actual net up here if I need it. So, um, you know, as, as you'd kind of expect, it's it's neat, it's tidy. If I get a run at three o'clock in the morning and you know I'm, I'm tired and I'm wondering, uh, you know, what's where, it's never even a consideration. All you need to remember here is the steps. But um, other than that, I'm not falling over a you know. A, bait boat I'm not falling over a chair um, keep it clean keep it tidy and always I would say follow the same suit everywhere you go have everything in its place and that way there's never any consideration of where do I leave this where do I leave that okay and tip number eight is the uh, margin swims so um, something that I think we've we've all looked at over the past and I'm sure we've had a lot of had so much success to a certain degree um, you know there's a, there's a very good reason for that I mean uh, the margins normally are quite shallow um, and here at Cromwell um, it isn't I mean literally a rod lengths out and it goes to 13 feet so it drops off pretty rapidly um, but as a rule most lakes are not like that they're quite shallow and they kind of go off relatively steadily um, so whenever you turn up at a bank you know yeah find your main swim the one that you know you're going to be fishing um, other than that what I would say um, is to put some bait in the edges uh, in terms of you know left or right it's up to you whatever you think looks good obviously if there's an overhanging tree normally normally a good space um, so pre-bait there don't put a rod in unless it's a runs water you don't put a rod in um, you know sp specimen waters very rarely you're going to get them coming in that early in the day so it's it's a great night spot bait up that area leave it well alone um, and then at night time uh, you'll probably have some luck there but um, as I say, you know, pick a couple of swims in front of you, fish them, bait the others. Okay, and number nine um, is a strange one to kind of title, but uh, I'd say, you know, keeping warm um, is obviously important. So I would actually file this under the kind of clothing section, if you like, because there's a multitude of different types of clothing you can have. I mean, for example, today I'm in a relatively, you know, medium kind of thickness in terms of actual jumper so this is more than enough to kind of keep me warm on, on most nights and certainly in the day um, you know I can take this off and I can obviously have them on the top underneath um, some people prefer um, full-blown suits again no problem not a problem at all other people prefer waders so they, they can literally wade out but also you know they're quite warm as well um, once again there is no right or wrong answer on this find out what works for you uh, maybe go to, to go outdoors or your local tackle shop um, and see exactly you know what they have available see what works for you um, and take it from there really but you know you don't need to spend a fortune on this but don't go and skimp 20 quid 30 quid suits um, because chances are they're going to be very thin um, and calm those 
know, colder nights, maybe not, fr not freezing winter nights, but come in colder nights, you're really going to feel it. So make sure, go and do your research, find the right type of suit for you, or the type of outfit for you, and go from there. Okay, and uh, tip number 10 um, is uh, basically a bit, a bit like preparation, really. So uh, what I mean by this is bait prep. Um, now, everyone's got their own flavours, um, it's very much an individual thing. Uh, me personally, um, I like to have a, a bucket full of particles ready to go. So for example, this trip to, to Cromwell um, has been around uh, chilli ham, sweet corn, um, chopped up boilie, whole boilies, uh, a couple of uh, kind of gloves that I got from uh, obviously the, the Hydrobates team. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Yes, yeah, say um, chili hemp was was the main one. Pallets, etc. So um, that's me. You know, again, everyone's different. So all I would say is, you know, um, spend a lot of time looking at you know bait preps and uh, and bits like that. Find something that works for you. No one has got the magic formula. You know, it it, it just it just doesn't it doesn't exist. So um, you know, use again what is what, what what's right for you. When um, you know, some people. I mean, if you use PVA, for example, so if you use PVA bags or mesh or um, you know, stringers, whatever it is, maybe think about you know doing the particle baits and then uh, chucking those into a separate box um, inside the tub um, and have them ready to go for when you turn up at the bank. You know, you don't really want to time PVA bags. Um, get it done as much as you can beforehand, uh, and you know you should be pretty much on your way. Fishing is about comfort. Fishing is about fun. Um, my idea of fun is not tying up 10, 15 bags when I get to the bank. So, you know, spend a little bit of time uh, and uh, make sure you get it right before you go. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. So I just want to say thank you of, again if you know, you've made it to the end of this video. I do really appreciate, uh, you know, you spending your time. Um, I will put a, a quick link up above, which will give you a link to my uh, recent um, vlog. Obviously, it's at this particular social with Hydrobates. Um, if you obviously want to think about joining Hydrobates, then please do drop me a message. Or otherwise, go to the Hydrobates website, which uh, is hydrobates.com. Um, alternatively, you know, again, if uh, if you want to have a quick look at my other sessions, I've got one at Millbrook Fisheries over in Stoke-on-Trent, so a bit closer to home than this one. Um, again, you know, please uh, feel free, take a look. Um, you know, please subscribe, like, share, comment, give me your thoughts. You know, wh where's your favourite fishery? Uh, what you know, what is your favourite thing uh, to try and target? Is it carp? Is it something else? Um, but you know, either way, you know, leave us a comment. I'll promise to come back to you straight away. Um, and either way, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate the patience. Hopefully, you've learned something from this video. If not, then tight lines.